world headquarters of the masked creature broadcasting from somewhere partially underground on this continent. I entitled my teaching tonight, What Spiritual Food <coughs> Should We Eat? Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> Years ago, uh, <coughs> there were different uh, allegories or illustrations about groups of food and what we should eat. I've sometimes seen like a square, I've sometimes seen a pyramid, and <clears throat> telling us what foods we should eat in each group, and the pyramid in the bottom, the, what we should eat the most of, the top, the least of. And I also have a view <clears throat> as far as the spiritual food. 1 Peter 2.2. Let me read 1 Peter 2.2. 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. All of us need spiritual food. And as we go through the Bible, we need to listen to the Bible, to the instruction of it. And this verse right here He's talking about babies. I don't know if <clears throat> the people watching this have ever uh, watched babies. I, I knew someone who was the um, superstar of feeding babies. And one time they um, were babysitting another baby. And when the mother came home from work to pick up the baby, uh, the baby didn't want to go to the mother. And the mother says, what did you do to my baby? It wasn't what she did to the baby, but she breastfed the baby. And there's a picture here about how babies love that. And this is the illustration here of this desire that we should have for the Bible, that we're spiritual babies. And as we read this word, and it's just like we can't get enough of it. And this is a beautiful picture here. Of, of something that's been going on thousands of years, of babies being fed by their mothers. And this is how God wants to feed us with His Word, the Bible. I, the mass preacher, use old-fashioned cassettes. I've been using it for years. I may go through the Bible two or three times <clears throat> a year. I'm working at home. I'm at the head of my headquarters, working in my files in my office. Um, I'll just flip in and I'll just go through the Bible and, and I'm getting the Word of God in me. And another thing is something called Bible portraits that you can do. Uh, I know someone, he takes books in the Bible and he uh, blows it up you know, in a photograph, and he make, puts it all, like one book, in, in like a frame. And you could see the context. Uh, you read the whole thing all, like in one view. And it's a fascinating way to, to read the Bible. Um, memory verses. You can take a, a card, and you could write a verse on one side, the location on the other, and you memorize that. And then you go to another one. And when you get that memorized, and then every day you review what you've already done, and you begin to build up a list, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 verses. Another little clue for the milk of the word is there was a man, gentleman, Dr. Stuart McBurney, most brilliant human being I ever met. And uh, I, over the years, years ago, I talked to him about some issues on writing and uh, documentation and he would teach his church that when the preacher is preaching go through the scriptures follow along and by this following along what you're doing is familiarizing yourself with the books of the Bible. I'm kind of concerned with some of the new technology today if we're losing something because what I'm about is like the Reformation, uh, every man his own priest unto God. I'm about 
personal responsibility about every single person who is watching this, that you will take responsibility for understanding the Bible yourself. I know people, they spend a lot of money on a lot of things, but to buy a commentary for 50 bucks, yeah, I don't got the money. And it concerns me. And the online stuff, <clears throat> are, are we losing something of flipping back through the books and familiarizing us as this machine is doing it? I mean, I, I don't know. But you're responsible to make decisions so that you correctly understand this book. And that's where your desire and your heart is. So my food, spiritual food grouping, if you will, is a chart. And this chart here is what we should have the most of. And um, the first block, if you will, there's three blocks, and the top block is, and you might uh, get a pen and paper and put this on pause and, and write this down. This is what we need to be, know the last of. And that might not be the most appropriate way to say it. I'm not saying don't read this. I'm saying I have a problem going through the book, in a, the Bible in a year in one of these programs and spending the same amount of time on Leviticus 10 as you do on Romans 8, chapter 8. I have a real hard time spending the same amount of time there. So I go through my studies audio through through tape and then when there's selected books I read for, uh, just read slowly and to analyze it uh, okay this top block Genesis t chapter 12 through chapter 50 Exodus through Esther Ecclesiastes to Malachi category 2 that you spend more time on Genesis 1 through 11 that answers all, a lot of the whys and hows. How did we get here? Why is there sin in the world? Was there a flood? Tower of Babel? A lot of things, really profound things, will set a foundation for your understanding the Christian view. Psalms, Proverbs, <coughs> Job, maybe um, a half a psalm a day, a half a proverb a day, half a chapter of Job a day. I say Job because it's a, a book showing us about God, you know, this whole thing of tragedy and suffering and what happens there. It's a, per, a real profound book. Uh, Matthew through Acts. And this book is a second category. And then the third category that I believe that most of our time, once you got a few foundations in the faith and Maybe after you've gone through the Bible once, you know, you have to ask God to deal with you on this. But Romans through Jude, those books are the owner's manual. You buy a product store, you get this manual and what this thing is about and how to use it. This, Romans through Jude, is the owner's manual for the Christian walk. And if you want to be a thriving, successful Christian, this is the most important section to you. If, in, a, in closing tonight, if you um, are a new believer and you're not sure where to read, um, maybe the book of John, and then and I would go to the book of Romans. What the book of Romans does is lay a doctrinal position of this thing called salvation. It, it talks about people who are religious, and it talks about people who are not religious, and how they're all in the same boat. And um, it's a very profound book. Um, book. Another idea is to color code your Bible. Um, you can take... Uh, markers, and like if there's a verse on salvation, color it. Uh, if it's uh, something, another topic, and you can go through, and you, you can either, you used to be able to buy Bibles that were 
coded like that, and like healing, like salvation, and you could at a glance flip through and turn to that verse. And in closing tonight, um, I encourage you to be like newborn babes, like that baby that's with the mother and is feeding and is just, man, it is just all great. And in this book, especially the New Testament, especially the Romans through Jude, not to ignore the other stuff, but, but somehow there's a, there's a balance, but the focus of that should be, be the understanding of Romans through Jude. And whatever you decide, if you decide, no, I'm going to go through the year program, you know, but, but you're responsible before God to have some sort of program. And with all the audio stuff we have today, um, just ask the Lord to lead you on how you should study the scriptures. And there are just there are so many. You know, there's a lot of bad news uh, in our world today. There's a lot of bad things that you know, people are talking about all the time. But there's some really good things. The technology today, the things we can do to understand the Word, uh, is just amazing. And we're responsible in the sight of the Lord Jesus Christ to, 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 to do this. And in our heart, to be like a newborn babe, desiring the sincere milk of the Word. God bless you. Signing off from somewhere partially underground on this continent. Good night.